Hello, everyone, and welcome to another live. This day, we're doing it on uh, Thursday. Um, oftentimes, we've done it on uh, Fridays. Last week, we did Fridays. Um, and we're planning to do this more often on Fridays, but sometimes we might need to shift the days because um, some other things might come up. But we're happy to be here again and uh, to be talking about tea. And I uh, think we did a, um, an, uh, a questionnaire on Instagram and yes. we got some responses from you regarding what you would like us to talk about. So that also gave us the idea for the, th the topic of today. And um, what is the topic of today? Um, it's how tea can uh, affect or benefit your health. And uh, it's a little bit of a tricky phrasing because it's sometimes that, that makes it sound like it could cure a cold or, you know, prevent. Um... Oh, but it can. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that's um... probably the only thing it can. Do. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew that last week. <laughs> uh -huh. Didn't um, I send you a message saying uh, gargle did, yeah. some green tea? I was pretty out of it, though. I, I didn't remember it until the next couple of days. <laughs> right. right. Okay. Um, but we got some other responses as well, uh, getting on, giving us some ideas for next week mm -hmm. and the week after, because we plan to do another live again next week on Friday and the week after on Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, what will, be, will we be talking about next week? See, next week, um, we are going to be talking about a couple different tea regions around Japan. Okay. And um, uh, you have a, a gift box or a sample box from those three regions, your uh, liquid jade series. So there's the Man Mandokoro region. Shh. No? Can't talk about it? Okay. Don't tell them just yet. <laughs> this is a surprise because okay. it's, not, it's not live yet. Ah. So we should keep this a very... Um, a fun surprise. All right. Well, there are three very interesting tea regions around Japan that we will be talking that we about. will be talking about. And what did we have on the menu for the week after? So the week after is how you can uh, use your used tea leaves after you're finished steeping them and drinking the tea. Um, That's actually yeah. going to be a very exciting topic. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's very interesting because tea opposed to matcha. With sencha and kabusecha and gyokuro and other tea types of teas, you have the leaf and it turns into waste after you've extracted it. So what to do other than to throw it away is uh, definitely something that I think a lot of people will be interested in. Yes. So not next week, but the week after, we'll be um, introducing a few mm -hmm. of the uh, more interesting applications that we've um, discovered. And so you might want to uh, mark the date and join us in that uh, talk. Yes. And we will be posting updates on the Instagram stories as well. So stay tuned. Yes. Follow the Tea Crane on YouTube. Follow the Tea Crane on Instagram and on uh, Facebook to get all the updates. And also we're streaming this live on YouTube and Facebook. So you can choose whichever uh, channel. But most of the updates you will get also through Instagram. Yes. All right, then I think it's time to, well, I got some tea going here, but I think <laughs> it's time to um, address some of the uh, questions and topics that we had for today. And you said we were going to be talking about how tea can benefit your mm -hmm. health. I think we should look at that a little bit broader as a, for the topic. Rather than saying health, I think health is uh, well understood by everyone. Um, I think we might actually say well-being mm. rather than health. It's mm. mm. a good word. Because it's not... Well, first of all, health is misunderstood. Health okay. itself is misunderstood. <laughs> the way we treat health or deal with health is misunderstood. And more important, I think we should just think about our well-being in general rather than just saying health. Because health sort of sounds as if it is limited to the physical mm, it does whereas well-being and also tea has more benefit than only the physical so well-being really relates to as well your physical as your mental as your spiritual as your energetical as the total picture of being mm. of the being 
<laughs> and uh, so, yeah, let's talk about how T can do that for you. And what did you have some thoughts on that topic? Or did we have anything from, um, from anyone on uh, uh, Instagram? Yes. Um, so we posted a question, um, what or if any health benefits or ways that tea can benefit your health do you um, drink tea for? Um, and actually most people answered they didn't which drink I think tea is, for health. Which I think is significant, is more yes. significant than the people that really said they do. Because how many to, how many responses did we get? I think that was posted last night. So yeah, we got um, one night of responses. Yes, I, it was about 25 to 30 responses and there was only four yeses. Which is question. interesting. Yeah, that means that knows. <laughs> 30 people out of 35, not even, 31 out of 35, said that they don't drink tea necessarily for its health benefits. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you look on the web for tea, you see you can find a lot of um, posts, blogs, videos, information about how tea can help your health, how tea mm -hmm. can benefit your health, what caffeine and catechin, and what caffeine does for your health, what catechin does for your health, what the amino acids in tea do for your health, which tea has more amino acids than another tea, and which one you should yeah. drink for the benefits of <laughs> amino acids. It's yeah. a whole lot of health benefits that are being swung around. Yeah. And, and most people, at, at least the people that I know, don't seem to care about that much. I think it's a little bit of a um, barrier, or what's the word, obstacle for people trying to get into tea, I think. Because if I had been interested in tea and I said, and I Googled something about it and the only thing that came up was health stuff, I would have not been very interested in it mm. at all. Right. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I was... Like you, I was a little bit surprised that so many people answered that they didn't drink tea for health. I'm actually happily surprised. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised there. Um, so the, a few people who did say yes mm -hmm. answered uh, what specific benefits uh, or effects they were looking for for tea. Right. Um, and most of those were about um, your alertness levels, your mm -hmm. energy energy levels, I guess. So they would said they drink tea for relaxing, actually. Wait, that's that's very contradictory. <laughs> Alertness. Right. And caffeine energy is levels. One, and then well actually they said relaxing. Like which one is it? Well energy levels positive or negative. Right. Now, I think tea does both and that is what, what tea is also known for, especially with its um, specific amino acid L theanine um, L L, L. Theanine? theanine that's where it was um, the um, well and the the catechin EGCG um, those are two very important components in the tea and the uh, the amino acid L theanine definitely has that effect that sort of keeps you alert but relaxes you at the same mm -hmm. time right. which is Different than coffee, because in coffee oh, you have just much. the caffeine that gets you alert, but doesn't relax you in any, any way. So drinking tea for relaxation definitely is something that a lot of people look to. But it's still, <coughs> tea is still an, uh, a nervous stimulant. A nervous stimulant. So it affects your nervous system in such a way that it enhances it, it triggers it, oh. which is where the, uh, the awareness comes from. Mm -hmm. And that's where it. Yeah, I, I can't really say how it really like works because I, I don't have a, <clears throat> something that I can use to look inside <laughs> my body and see where it goes. But in a way, I feel that these sorts of lift you up Mm -hmm. it keeps you relaxed as well as a, as a side effect of it. But if you look for relaxation through tea, then tea is not really, you just, you don't just drink tea to be relaxed. Mm. 
drinking tea is a relaxing activity. It's, um, it's an enjoyable activity. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the tea itself. But it's relaxing. not necessarily the tea itself but that is going to relax you because it affects your nervous system in such a way that there is a, um, there's a trigger that does something to your nervous system, mm -hmm. which is always, well, not always the best thing to do. Right. Mm. There are many uh, stimulants like coffee, coffee tobacco, um, other drugs uh, that also affect your nervous system. And in a similar way, there's either the ones that enhance it or the ones that tranquilize it. Right. Neither of those sounds like the best. And these <laughs> these on that same scale, but mm -hmm. it's closer to where it almost does nothing, but there is still something going on. So what does the really do in that respect is, is it affects your nervous system. And you feel that because it's altered, you feel that there's a relaxation going on. You mm. feel good, which is what drugs do. <laughs> so it's a placebo? It's not, a, it's not necessarily a placebo. The effect is imagined. Maybe. <laughs> mm. The uh -huh. effect is... Now, how, should I, how should I say this? You... I should say that in a way, your nervous system is in a way compromised, affected, not necessarily in a positive way, but because you feel, relaxed. you feel relaxed and comfortable in that situation, you feel that tea does something good to you, whereas it is not necessarily the best thing to do to your body. Mm. So is it not good for your body then? Is that, is that what you're saying? No. No, don't try to put any <laughs> don't try to put anything in my mouth that I'm not trying to say. Okay, you said earlier that it doesn't it's kind of in the middle. It doesn't have But the effect is not as 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 huge as LSD. <laughs> well, <laughs> or cannabis, mm -hmm. which are basically doing the same thing. Mm. When you smoke weed, you feel good. And you feel relaxed, but it's mm -hmm. not doing the best thing to your body. Mm, right. You do feel good by it. And so you want more of it. You, mm. you want to enjoy it. That's what enjoying is about. Enjoying is all about comfort, but it's, comfort is not necessarily always the best situation. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like what we, like the lives we live now. We live in huge comfort, which basically makes us sick. Mm. So it's better to have less comfort and so seek more um discomfort for your health okay that's another thing <laughs> but that's not what we're that going could to be, be a talking whole other about. live talk I that's, think. A, that's another talk <laughs> which is something that i actually do want to be talking about because mm. drinking tea for your health is not just about what does tea do your body to your body and how can it affect your health in such a way no what i was mentioning earlier is tea is an um is not only the beverage, but also the moment. And that is a very important aspect. The mm, energy yes. that you get from the tea is something that affects you in both positive and negative ways. I'm, I'm not going to be lying about it just for the sake of I'm a tea vendor and I want to sell more tea and everyone should think tea is absolutely good and great. No, there's good effect, um, effects and lesser effects of tea. Mm. But it is part of a larger whole, which means you're enjoying it in occasions with other people. Mm -hmm. You're enjoying it for yourself at certain times of the day. Mm -hmm. It has a place in your life. It is a part of your lifestyle or the way you live your life. And when we talk about health and well-being and looking at tea only, we also need to look at the larger picture. Mm. What is it that tea has a place in? Mm -hmm. And if you look at your life, then what other aspects of life are there to keep your health and well-being in place? Mm. 
that often go hand in hand with it's not like you eat hamburgers and drink coke all day through and then have one One sip of of tea tea. (laughs) uh, in the morning and say now i'm going to be healthy no Mm. that's not how it works right that is how we misunderstand um medicine Mm. where there's a problem on the surface that we take the band-aid stick it on and say now the problem's gone Mm. no it's not because we haven't done anything about the root origin of mm-hmm. any of the symptoms or any of the, uh, the issues. So if you stick a Band-Aid on here, next time it's going to pop up here. Mm-hmm. So taking a pill just to relieve yourself of a symptom does not mm-hmm. do anything for the cause. For the cause. Mm-hmm. And when we look at tea, we say, well, tea has these benefits. If you have high blood pressure, then you should drink tea. Mm-hmm. If... Um, if you want to, well, if it helps relieve cancer, it helps you lose weight. That doesn't mean that when you have weight, you drink tea, the weight goes away. Mm. That means that when you don't have weight, you drink tea, you won't gain it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Tea is a preventive medicine. Mm. In the way that medicine was understood before um, contemporary medicine came um, uh, came to the fore. Mm-hmm. And so when we look to tea, we should understand it in the way that by consuming tea, we can have it help us in sustaining a healthy lifestyle mm-hmm. where we won't get diabetes, we won't get cancer, we won't get overweight, etc., etc., etc. But it's not only the tea. That is doing it's but lifestyle. it's definitely not only the tea mm-hmm. it's the whole lifestyle it's the whole lifestyle so it's not if we drink tea every morning then i will never get no look at the rest what you eat mm-hmm. during the day mm-hmm. look at how you live your life how much do you move how long do you sit mm-hmm. how much do you mm-hmm. stare at a computer screen how much do you smoke mm. for example so there's those are all things that you need to take in account when you look at health and the benefits that tea can have on your health. Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's a whole other um, look that you have to have on what health maintenance really means. Mm-hmm. So are there any uh, benefits to tea, either short-term or long-term? Uh, physical health, mental health, spiritual health. Um, that does come from the tea itself and not necessarily the lifestyle? Maybe it's a personal thing. (laughs) Just enjoy the tea. I would say no. No, really? I would say, I would definitely say no. Well, tea, of course, can benefit you, Mm -hmm. but it is not because you are drinking the tea. Mm -hmm. You can drink the tea and... For example, build up a habit. Mm -hmm. So it's not the tea itself. It's the habit of drinking tea Mm. that benefits you because you have regular consumption of the tea. And then if that habit is in place, then we can look at, okay, tea has certain components that affect your health in a certain way, which then leads to lowered blood pressure, um, lesser possibility of getting cancer, affecting your metabolic system that... Um, you will easier, uh, more easily f- burn fat, mm. etc. Mm-hmm. Um, but to say this is because of the tea is a bit, mm-hmm. in my perception, a bit a step too far. Because mm. it's really the habit. You mm-hmm. have to continue consuming tea. And what is also important is that tea will replace things that you were drinking before you started drinking tea. Mm. If you stop those things, if you stop drinking other things, like liters of Mm Coca-Cola, and replace that with regular consumption of tea, then tea will do the the good to you as well. Mm -hmm. But having quit drinking Coca-Cola, then... That's the main... Well, that will also do even more good to you. Mm -hmm. So it is a difficult topic, seeing at what, <laughs> seeing what tea, well, how to approach the, the health benefits of tea. Mm-hmm. 
uh, something that a lot of people also don't really want to talk about, especially key vendors, because oftentimes you have these papers that claim something, but in order to get the, the effects, they have taken, for example, an, um, an, uh, a concentrated subtract of catechin mm -hmm. that they have applied in a certain molecule that then showed a result. And now suddenly they say, if you drink tea, this the happens. This happens, even though you never mm. get that amount of... Yeah, you'll have to drink 100 cups of tea <laughs> to get something like that. Or mm -hmm. So it's, it's a bit far-fetched. Oh. Yeah, I think there's a lot of misinformation about, out there about tea. <clears throat> misunderstanding, well, misinterpretation. Misunderstanding, yeah, mis hmm. misleading information, maybe. Yeah, well, definitely some things are used for the purposes of selling it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, some people tend to think that as long as it um, suits the consumer, mm -hmm. we can say anything we want. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like they can prove us wrong. <laughs> No, but that's definitely something that I don't want to do, that I don't mm -hmm. like to do. I see a lot of benefit in tea, in building a tea habit. And from that habit, tea can only benefit you in a good way. Mm -hmm. But it's not for nothing that at certain times you should avoid drinking tea because it affects you in a certain way. Like a lot of yogic practices request that you don't consume any stimulants, hmm. including tea. Including tea. Before your yoga practice for a certain period of time. Hmm. Because in an affected state, your energies will be altered and it becomes more difficult to, um, to practice genuinely tea. receive the benefits of the practice. Mm, because you're... You've consumed a stimulant. The energy. Yeah, you're under the influence. <laughs> under the influence of tea. <laughs> under the influence of tea, which is is possible. Sounds, yeah, that yeah. sounds reasonable. Mm. So definitely that is something that needs to be kept in mind. But looking at when to have a tea moment in your day, when to benefit mm. from the, the tea, when to use that stimulant, and when to receive the positive effects or... Mm -hmm. I mean, relaxation and enjoyment. We don't need to enjoy every moment in the day. We mm -hmm. don't need to be relaxed every moment in the day. When we need to be active, we need to be active. Mm -hmm. When we need to be um, serious and uh, alert, then we need to be alert. We can enjoy other times. So everything in uh, every moment has its own uh, purpose and its own required properties. Mm -hmm. So you just have to look at your day and see when do I have time for that rela relaxing moment and mm -hmm. when can I enjoy the tea and when can I make it a part of my uh, mm -hmm. my daily routine, my life. Right. It can definitely be a very meditative practice. And a meditative practice it is. Um, with matcha, for example, if you mm -hmm. just build a, um, a small everyday moment where you mindfully make the tea you could even do it according to a certain um tea, tea ceremony. ceremony yeah yeah which is something that i also um provide <laughs> and uh um, oh, yes. and a, a brief tea ceremony inspired uh way of whisking a bowl of matcha which is um accessible on my uh, tea ceremony online.com slash ebook which I have in the ebook version, but also there's a video course attached to it mm. that you can um, enjoy. So that is definitely something that I would recommend to look at when do we have tea, how do we have tea, and um, what kind of practices can we build throughout the day to get sort of an, um, a meditative or an, uh, an I would say, an, uh, intentional moment of tea because mm. with anything if you just do it unintentionally and you just like <laughs> gulp down tea all the time and like it becomes and uh, it becomes an addiction hmm. addictions don't have to be the substance is asking you um to use it mm -hmm. but addictions yeah, it can, can be, be that it makes you, you happy it makes you happy makes you feel good and you start to f start to feel when you're not having it 
it's um, you, you need to go mm. get it and it affects Start your crazy. life in a, in a certain way. Like, um, like a lot of people are addicted to sugar. <laughs> a lot of people are addicted to coffee. If you mm-hmm. don't have your coffee in the morning, you're grumpy for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it, with tea, it's possible as well that that happens. Mm-hmm. So it shouldn't be something that you just do mindlessly. Do mindlessly. Mm-hmm. Um, give it its purpose. Give it its, uh, its moment. Mm-hmm. And because of all the, uh, the misinterpreted inter- information and the, the strange guidance about tea, like you just have to drink tea, um, just have it all the time. Mm-hmm. It will uh, it will cure all your ailments. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a super drug. Um, I I sort of want to give some right guidance, not only mm-hmm. about what to um, how to use tea and how to have it benefit your health, but also how to give tea a place in your life and how to change your life in a way that you can always be healthy and that you take your well-being in your own hands without and i often say that people are outsourcing their well-being (laughs) it's like it's my body but hey doctor here you take care of it for me because i don't know what to do with it (gasps) which i find absolutely crazy Mm. It's my body. I should know how to deal with it. I should know what is going on with it. I should take care of it. So even though you don't have a manual and you can't look up what is going on with my body, there are different ways that you can perceive your body through meditation, through yoga, through doing things to it, and then see how it reacts and learn from that. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is a very pleasant and enjoyable practice discovering that about yourself yeah Mm -hmm. and you you learn a lot about your body you can Mm -hmm. some people call it ascetic practices which i very much like um but you do things to your body that sound crazy (laughs) (laughs) like going to stand on air under a cold Cold waterfall (laughs) in a in snowy landscape (laughs) and then you just feel what it does to your body and how your body reacts and you learn things from that Mm -hmm. And that is what I think is taking your well-being in your own hands, not going to someone and say, hey, I can't take care of it. Here here is my body. Do something with it. I just want to go over there. Can you help me do that? No, I want to be everywhere and I want to go everywhere by myself. And everywhere (laughs) where I go, I want to take care of it because it's mine. Mm -hmm. It's like taking care of your your car. Mm -hmm. If you know how to um, to tweak it and if something goes wrong, how to replace Mm -hmm. the wheel or doing things like that, Mm -hmm. but doing that with your body. Mm. And that is what I, the reason why I am starting in a a new project, which is called natural immunity. I'll, um, I'll put the writing on the, uh, on the screen. The natural immunity is uh, literally a pun (laughs) on your natural immunity. And of course the natural immunity that you get through the tea, how tea can make you more mindful of what you can do to sustain your own health and well-being. And you can do meditations with tea, but also through that you learn meditations without tea. You learn what nourishment is and how to approach nourishment in such a way that it is beneficial Mm -hmm. for your survival. Instead of the same with, with food. I mean, if you're drinking tea mindlessly all day through, we're, we're eating mindlessly all day through. You, first thing you do is you open your eyes and... Mm. Oh, it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> until you go to bed. <laughs> and if we could, we'd even eat, eat while we're sleeping. <laughs> so what I want to do with this natural immunity project is to raise more awareness about how you can take your own well-being in your own hands. Mm-hmm. become the driver of your own body of your own being and that through the lens of tea mm. because for me of course there are different ways that you can approach that you can you can t- say no i'm just going to do yoga and uh, yoga will take care of it all for me uh, or you just do meditation or you do different practices 
but for me, I've learned most through tea and especially through approaching organic tea because treating tea trees in an organic way is almost like handling people. Hmm. You see, when, when the tea trees are grown from seed, they're all, they've got their all different characters. They grow at the same, at, at different speeds. Um, taking care of the soil is basically taking care of the nourishment. If you overfeed them, they'll grow fat and also um, vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You see that with tea trees. If you over fertilize the soil, they'll get rich and fat. They've got nice thick leaves, mm -hmm. but they can't fend off the bugs of their own. Mm -hmm. They can't resist any diseases. So mm -hmm. they be basically become medicine dependent. Mm -hmm they become dependent on pesticides and mm. um, other chemicals that you spray on them. Mm. Because otherwise, if there's a bug there and it affects them, they'll just get sick. And they can't fight it off. They can't fight it off. So it's the same with people. If you get to a certain state of overweightness, mm -hmm then your immunity system is also compromised mm. in a certain way. Mm. And you become less able to resist any um, diseases mm. or sicknesses or illnesses or ailments. Or... Mm -hmm. well, I'm sure and that so... doesn't just apply to weight. It also applies to uh, if you are very unhealthy or you eat very unhealthy Especially, things. Yes. But if you... If your diet is, for example... Um, yeah, based on one aspect only if you only eat mm. meat uh, like you don't eat your veggies and you only eat your meat and your uh, potatoes then yes your immune system will still your immune system is also not um, supported in the right mm. way even if you look fit yes and it's the same that's also what happens with, with tea trees of course they only get fed what makes them fat <laughs> it's like Hansel and Gretel <laughs> <laughs> contemporary contemporary um, um, uh, yeah, tea bushes <laughs> contemporary tea farming is like Hansel and Gretel you just feed them what gets them fat and I think that's a quote for yeah. <laughs> a quote for Instagram somewhere for Instagram. <laughs> so is there anything else you'd like to add about the natural immunity well yeah um, I put the link down you can um, have a look at the, the link underneath. Natural Immunity is, um, is a new project that I'm starting. And for now, I just have a selection of teas that you can use for your everyday matcha moment, for your everyday um, tea enjoyment. Um, but I'll be growing this project into talking more about aspects as meditation, aspects as uh, well-being, uh, even things like um, like like bushcraft and how to filter water and how to survive in the wild and think basically uh, everything that you should know to take your well-being and your life in your own hands. Hmm. So it's part of a lifestyle. It's part of a lifestyle and natural immunity will basically become a project that revolves around creating a lifestyle mm. with tea as the, the center. It's like tea ceremony. You have, in tea ceremony, I always see that, uh, look at tea as the, um, in Japanese we call it the daikoko bashira, the central pillar mm. of a house. If that pillar is taken down, the house collapses. But because there's that central pillar, the roof is in place, the floors are in place, the walls are in place, and everyone can walk around freely in the house. And everyone that walks around in the house might see the pillar, but no one talks about it, nobody refers to it. Nobody says, oh, what a beautiful pillar. It's all about the house itself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people don't even realize that it's because there. that pillar is there, the house is there. Mm -hmm. It's the essential, the most essential fundament of the, the traditional style Japanese house. Hmm. And in tea ceremony, 
for me, the role of the, this central pillar is fulfilled by tea. Right, because we don't talk about tea that much in the tea ceremony. You don't it's talk about, about tea the... as much, no. Mm. It's more about the utensils, the, the place, the setting, mm -hmm. the, the calligraphy, the, the flowers. The... But if you take the tea away, then the entire thing collapses. Mm. And that is what also the way that I think building up an, uh, a lifestyle in the theme of natural immunity, we put tea centrally and then expand on that. Look at what, um, how tea can benefit your life, but then how the knowledge that you've gained from that benefit can again benefit you in other areas. How you, so we'll be talking about food, nour nourishment, um, uh, living out in, in nature, uh, camping, thing, uh, not a good fisherman yet, but <laughs> might be something that I might mm. want to look into. So a bit of, a uh, bit of that, the, um, yeah, a whole lot, a whole lot of things that just yeah. relate of... to your well being and mm -hmm. just enjoying life, enjoying life. That's what natural immunity is about. Mm -hmm. It's about enjoying life and being happy and energized and motivated in every single moment. And I wish that onto everyone. Mm. So I want to share that. So that is uh, your, what I'm going to be doing. With your intention immunity. with the natural immunity? Yeah. Mm. Well, that sounds like something to look forward to. Is it? I very is it much live? do. Is it? Is the project open? Live? Started? The website can be visited. I, I'm going to have a look if I can do some. If I can post it. Hello. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yes. I've also put the link in. Uh... Right. I also put the link in the uh, comments, so have a look there. And stay tuned for more. <laughs> and um, now I would say hop on the, uh, the email list as well. Stay tuned for more. And um, a lot of it will be announced also on the... Um, ooh, I have an uh, Instagram channel already made for natural immunity. So you might want to look it up in uh, Instagram as well. And I'll be posting there as well. So the tea crane has mostly been a selection of artisanal, organic teas that were made in an authentic way in line with what I see what tea is or was a hundred years ago. That is mm. mainly what the purpose of the tea crane is. Going on that discovery, discovering what tea was a hundred years ago, how it was made before chemicals and um, before fertilizer in, well, uh, chemical fertilizer ex um, especially, were taken in use and how it was just grown naturally and mm. authentically. And with that in mind, I created the selection at the tea crane, which resulted in if you look only at the matchas, a very wide range of quite controversial matchas. Controversial. Which is, they're not blended. They're not mm. grown for the sake of um, getting that umami. They don't need to be as consistent every year. It's, I have a matcha that is absolutely wild. I have a matcha that is, that is, well, if you drink it, you know that it's very organic. Mm -hmm. Like what you would think of organic tea, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So it's very grassy, it's green, um, it's got some bitterness in it, and mm -hmm. it's just delightful in that way. Mm -hmm. But you do have to change your mind and, and know, well, this is an organically produced tea. Mm -hmm. It's not what we expect from matcha regularly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I have organic matcha that is, um, produced by a master blender who creates a great balance mm. in the flavor and the aroma and everything. And so it's, it's absolutely delicious, but I don't have anything that is like 
well, this is what we think matcha is. Mm. So um, if you purchase the matcha, we'll get what we think it is. No, it's all like, it blows your mind in one way or not. <laughs> and that's what I tried to do with, with the tea cream because I wanted to look for teas that are not available anymore. Mm. This is what tea was 100 years ago. This is how tea can be if we approach it in an organic way, but differently from the, the conventional way. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's all teas that are unique, somewhat exceptional, um, and interesting. Yeah, well, and some of them are very, very unique. Uh, like that wild matcha is one of my favorites, just the idea of it, just because matcha is, so, is usually so strictly... Mm -hmm. uh, cultivated. They, yeah. There's a very stand, like a very strict way of cultivating it. But mm. when it's just grown wild, there's none of that. It's just the, only the bare, like in to make it into tencha, to make it into matcha. That's the only process that happens. Yeah, and it's even is, seed grown, which means that it's not. Yeah, it's produced from cultivars, which are also um, used to keep the consistency mm -hmm. of the tea. Mm -hmm. Whereas with seed grounds, you can't contain that uh, consistency. Right. So that is the tea crane. Mm -hmm. but now, natural immunity is, of course, for me, that is a very important topic. But with natural immunity, more your well-being, your, your health. Um, cultivating that habit of drinking tea mm -hmm. stands more central. Right. And so for natural immunity, I've chosen... Now I've got three matchas um, on the, the site, and I also will be adding a sencha, a green tea, and a black tea. Mm -hmm. okay. And for those, I choose teas that are more recognizable. Like you say, this is, this is matcha. Oh, yes, okay, this is matcha. I understand it. Um, of course, all the teas are organic, and they're artisanally made, but they're more what the uh, average consumer has in mind of uh, this is a green tea, you drink it, okay, it's a green tea. tea. <laughs> this is a matcha, you drink it, okay, it's a matcha. matcha. So that is <clears throat> the type of selection that I've done for mm. the, the teas that I have on uh, natural immunity. It makes it more interesting mm -hmm. and also makes it more accessible, I think. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. For people who mm. don't know as much about tea but they want some of the benefits and they're not yeah. slapped in the face by this completely good wording <laughs> it's exactly what the tea the tea grain does it's like uh, if you're a novice to tea then the tea grain is a slap in the face with things that you're like oh but i'd never seen what, that before what, what's going <laughs> on that? no tea grain is definitely for tea connoisseurs connoisseurs yes for people who already have an understanding of tea and an appreciation for tea and look oh, for something yeah. more interesting, mm -hmm. something special, mm -hmm. then the tea crane is definitely an, uh, a great selection. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm going to just continue on with the natural immunity project alone. The tea crane, of course, will be here. And as the tea crane, I will also do more for tea education. Mm. I want to, of course, make that kind of tea more accessible still and also as I've done with my book um, I'm hoping to put together a, a course in the coming year year and a half that deals with everything from where does tea come from how is it grown the differences between cultivars and uh, seed grown tea trees how is sencha produced and how is it different from kamairicha which different approaches mm -hmm. are there and also take um, make a whole video course of that so that I can include footage from the different factories, the mm -hmm. different equipments that are being used, how and uh, yeah, footage of how tea is harvested, etc. So I have all that in a full fledged course. And that's something that I will want to work on over the course of well, the coming one, one and a half, two years, maybe. Mm -hmm. And as we go, I already want to take time to make well to host simple lectures mm -hmm. on certain aspects of tea mm -hmm. and the first one that i've uh, in mind is was it the 14th of april or the 17th of april let's have a look i don't know i don't remember uh it's in april <laughs> it's in april one of those two days it is in april and tomorrow i'm going to make the official uh, official announcement mm. So 
I'm going to do an, um, a lecture on how the tea industry has changed. It's Sunday, April 17th, when I'm going to do an, um, a lecture on how tea culture in Japan, tea production has changed over the past 100 years, less or more, and what tea manufacturing looked like before industrialization around the 50s, 60s, 70s. So basically, I will be explaining about the difference between seed grown tea trees, mm. cultivars, mm. Um, different approaches to harvesting and different approaches to how tea trees were planted and spread out over the farms. Mm. Um, how a different approach to flavor mm. came in place after more fertilization was taken in uh, in use and I'm especially going to go to three different um, regions where that where that heritage is is most strong mm. most people know the um, well some of the people that have already visited the tea crane and are regular customers love these teas because they're um, they're the regions from my liquid jades uh, mm. collection but I will want to look at those regions more and see why they are so special. Mm. And so during that lecture on April 17th, I will take the time to explain mm. how it's different, what has changed, how tea production looked like 100 years ago, and what that does to the tea. Mm. So for those who are interested in learning more about tea and going in depth about tea knowledge, and of course, I invite you to stay tuned for my update on uh, Facebook and Instagram tomorrow so that you can immediately sign up and reserve your seat to our workshop. Hmm. Hmm. So a lot is going on. Yeah, lots of new projects. Somewhere. Lots of new projects, lots of new stuff to work on. Mm. Um, but as you know, we, we need to keep adjusting. We need to keep... Uh, looking for new ways to well reinvent ourselves and um, also new ways to benefit everyone to a greater extent. So putting out more content, putting out more uh, information and also reaching different, different types of people mm. can help benefit more people at the same time. And that's ultimately what I want to do. So... I would definitely want to share everything that I've learned through tea, everything that I've gained from tea with as many people you. as possible. <laughs> yes. All right. Did we have any questions on the comments? No, no questions on the comments. I don't. Well, it's a very straightforward it's... topic, and I think it's more of an, um, right. a way of thinking, a way mm -hmm. of approaching the, uh, the subject. So, but always feel free to uh, reach out, send us some comments, um, say hello, uh, perhaps share some of your experiences. I don't know, do you have any um, a reason to drink tea? Why do you, why do you drink tea? Uh, well, I think I talked about it a little last week. Um, definitely at first it was for the social aspect. I really got into tea with a friend. Um, and nowadays it's, um, I mean, before I really realized it became a part of my life and um, I can't say I quite have the, uh, I probably haven't quite reached the meditative or the, uh, what's the word you used? Intentional moment quite yet. I do still right. kind of drink it a little bit mindlessly, but um, yeah, it's uh, definitely the taste, <laughs> enjoying the tea itself. And um, it's just, there's so much to learn about tea hmm. and even though I've been learning about it for years and drinking it for 10 years now, I still feel like there's a lot of things I could learn and a lot of, a lot more teas I could try. And that's a really fascinating experience. Mm. Yeah. Not, not to create any um, misunderstandings. I didn't say that um, 
tea drinking is not good, even if you do it um, mindlessly. Ah, yes. No, <laughs> sorry. I mean, I'm working towards making it a more intentional mm -hmm. practice. I mean, I haven't yeah. made it there yet, but I'm trying. Because there is there's more benefit if you intentionally set the moment, set the time um, aside and really incorporate the, the benefit that you gain from the tea mm -hmm. with the right atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So, but there's nothing wrong with in just saying, I'm going to enjoy it. True, yeah. I find that the important is always the balance. You can't say this is good, this is bad. Then we should shun the bad. No, you should take half of the bad and half of the good. Balance. Balance. You can't say this is good, we should take only that. Because that creates imbalance and that also creates bad. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how extremism works. <laughs> and there are people who even within tea say, this is the good tea, that's the bad tea. We should mm -hmm. only take this tea. And so you only... Uh, you've got people who only drink one certain type of tea. Really? Just one certain kind of tea? That seems... Yeah, the belief. To, de to defeat the purpose of tea, there's so many. Why would mm. you just stick with one? How long does it take to ship tea to the United States? That's a good question. That's <laughs> actually something that I want to, want to address at this moment. Thank you for the question, Michael. Um, At the, moment, At the moment, the only possibility that I have for shipping tea to the U.S. from Japan is through DHL. DHL is uh, express shipping, so the cost of it is slightly higher, but it reaches within a week. So shipping can be done very quickly, and there are no issues that I have encountered at the moment uh, in shipping to the U.S., but my only uh, possibility at the moment is using individual, well, um, private couriers. You can't use the post system because the post does not accept packages to the US, Canada, nor Australia. For the moment. For the moment. Hopefully that will change. Probably longer. Probably won't change anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Giving you hope. <laughs> yep. Um, because of, they say, Thanks. there is not enough um, air traffic. There's, they use passenger flights to put packages on and ship them around the world. And there's not enough of that. So they just stopped doing it. So they just stopped doing it. Unfortunate. But so we need private carriers to ship packages. And then there's not a problem. DHL has its own planes. So... That's basically what those planes are made for. They're, they're made for flying packages around. And it's, um, oh, it's been a great help for me because most of the tea cranes business is international. Mm. Everything needs to ship international. And the moment that international shipping to the post system fell away, of course, I wasn't able to sell anything or to do any business. So I, it, it harmed me quite a lot. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> well, while we're going back to the topic, is, uh, is there any particular reason that you drink tea? If you could condense it into a <laughs> one or two reasons. Oh, God, one or two reasons. <laughs> It's like, give me an answer, <laughs> two words only. <laughs> or could, maybe that can be our, our tea talk three weeks from now. Well, see, I drink tea because I don't drink anything else. Hmm. Is that enough? <laughs> <laughs> No, I drink tea and I drink water, but I don't drink any alcohol. Is that for health reasons? No, I just don't. I lost interest. Mm. It's, see, that's the thing. I don't drink alcohol intentionally. Mm -hmm. 
it's just, unintentional. It mm -hmm. just happens to be so that I don't drink it. During my youth, I think I, I drank enough for two <laughs> lifetimes. I, I had my fill of um, alcoholic beverages. Um, yes, but then at a certain time, I, I didn't really enjoy coffee. I drank liters of coffee too. I might have had enough coffee for several lifetimes as well, especially with my first job. I would see the first thing that would happen. I'll give you a bit of a timeline here. Um, I came to Japan, exchange student, graduated, got a first job, which was quite a, a hectic and uh, demanding job. And then I started working for a tea store and started tea crane after that. Mm. During study and on my first job, I was already in course of practicing tea ceremony, but was doing tea ceremony for an interesting culture. So not necessarily as much for an interest in tea. Mm -hmm. And I got in the habit of drinking loads of coffee because coffee is easy. You've got a coffee machine, you just walk into the office, you put some coffee in and press the button, you make like two or three liters uh, of coffee, and then you just drink it. And by noon, I wouldn't make a second pot. And that's just for yourself? Yes. <laughs> that was my, my coffee Your machine. Your pot of coffee. <laughs> that was my coffee machine. So at a certain point, I realized drinking all this coffee is no good. At that time, I was also still drinking um, alcohol. So few beers every day, pots of coffee. It was not healthy. And I realized this job is affecting me in a way that I don't feel it's beneficial. I didn't enjoy the job as much. Drinking coffee was just helping me cope with it and staying awake when I really needed to sleep because I was overworking myself. Mm. It was not just an office job nine to five. I was basically working 24 seven. Um, at times my boss would even call me in the middle of the night and say, you have to send out this proposal right now because the client in the US is waiting. This is a Japanese company, right? It's got the best of both worlds. Oh, the best of Yeah. American workaholicism, <laughs> the Japanese base. American workaholics? <laughs> oh, coming here to Japan, I don't, I don't know if I would say it's the Americans that are working too hard. I'm not generalizing. I'm not generalizing the Americans. The American. I'm, there are those that are just fanatic about their job. Oh, that is true. Which is, I think, worse than just being demanded to stay long hours, in, like in Japan. <laughs> so you got best of both worlds. Um, it was, so it was a quite tiring job and I, uh, felt I'm just drinking all this coffee, but it's not doing any good to me. I just should stop the coffee and realize how tired I really am and then cope with my tiredness. Mm. So I stopped drinking coffee. I bought hojicha <laughs> <laughs> and I started drinking that instead. Gosh can keep my eyes open <laughs> so, yeah, staring at the computer like this <laughs> couldn't wake up in the morning couldn't get to bed in the evening too tired couldn't work couldn't do anything and that's how I stopped drinking coffee <laughs> and then I gradually started shifting to tea got more interested in tea and that's why I got also the uh, a, a job in a tea uh, firm. Mm. And then I started drinking a lot of tea because I wanted to learn a lot about tea. The more you want, if you want to learn about tea, you have to drink a lot of tea. Right. The more you drink, the more you'll understand, the more you can learn. And that's what I did. And gradually, after half a year, I realized I hadn't been drinking any alcohol. Hmm. I had just been drinking so many different kinds of tea that I was already feeling satisfied mm. that I didn't feel the need to drink anything else. And that's how I transitioned. Hmm. Without even realizing. 
without even realizing. Yeah. So why do I drink tea? First of all, because I'm interested in its culture. Secondly, because I am interested in tea as the product itself. I understand that drinking tea as opposed to coffee, drinking tea as opposed to alcohol, drinking tea as opposed to soda is healthier. And you can drink tea and receive benefits. Well, of course, we can say yes with matcha. If you say, I need to work late and stay up all night, and you drink a bowl of koicha, you will not go to bed, and you will realize that there was a significant <laughs> benefit. <laughs> but you don't get the jitters like with coffee. Mm. So if you want to get the benefits of drinking tea without any of the um, side effects, then... What was I saying? Um, yeah, that it's better to go with tea. Mm. If you mm. want to drink coffee without the side effects. Not without necessarily words, only coffee. If words. you just want to drink anything without its side effects. And for <laughs> me, it was not necessarily coffee or staying awake. But the biggest reason was that I was able to drink many different flavors, many different tastes. And not get drunk. Not get any adverse effects while still being in, able to enjoy mm -hmm. different aromas, tastes, like you could drink wine and have different um, impressions, but after a while you'll get drunk or you're not allowed to swallow it. And that's also not fun. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I think I am. All right. Let's look at a questions. few of the last comments here. Yes, that is, uh, we're at the tea crane. So that's um, the shop and it's, uh, the table is getting seasoned little by little. So and, um, the colors are turning out pretty well. Thanks for asking. <laughs> have a look. Recently, I happened to chat with a person in New York who had tasted tea cranes matcha tea, saying he mm. was surprised to find it different from other organic matchas. And it's definitely a lot different. Um, the teas that I look for are more things that are also uh, authentic in a way that it's not just made for the market or made to be sold, but that it's more the way tea is grown and preserving the tea for the sake of um, what it is. It's, the tea farmers that I like to work with are the ones that grow their tea trees or cultivate their tea trees as if it were their own children. It's to create the right environment for the tea, tea, for the tea tree to thrive. Just like as with a child, you create the right environment so that it can develop its skills its, mm. um, and come out in the best way. So, not just so that it'll. So, not yet, yeah, not just mold it into any shape so you can sell it. Big difference. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, fun chat. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And um, so to everyone, I hope you look forward to next week's chat about different tea regions and a, a little bit of an introduction to what I'll be talking about on April 17th. Um, the lecture. The lecture on how tea culture has <clears throat> changed, how tea production has changed. And I will, oh yes, and we're also going to be talking about the um, 
uh, the, the, the things that you can do with used tea leaves, mm -hmm. these spent, uh, spent tea leaves. And maybe already if you have a certain way that you like to reuse your tea leaf, you could leave it in a comment on uh, this video below and we can collect them and then also talk about them in that, um, that talk. So hope to see everyone again then. And for the time being, keep drinking a lot of tea, keep brewing and uh, yeah, drink a lot of tea. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.